Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and I'm here with Alan Kells. Alan, you are responsible for the UK market here in Strickland and we are going to just do a quick whip round some of the products, but also some of the sort of services and support you give the customer group. Yep. So first of all, the classics, isn't it, that we've got in front of us? Yeah, what you got here, and, and you have to bear in mind, every city, every town, every village, at the edge of these these places, you're going to see mini buckets. Yep. You're going to see mini excavators and mini buckets. So they're actually quite an important part of our range. Um, you know, there there are hundreds and hundreds of these go out every week. Um, while while we start at our, our micros, uh, we go right up, I suppose you call them uh, minis as well, but into our middies, into into our 8 ton and then so yep. on, 13, 21 um, and, and up to a 50 ton as well. And so the, the thing about these sort of buckets and we're seeing the, the, the different types, obviously blades and, and then, you know, the, the, this, the clutching, yeah, as I say, yeah, yeah, with the GET bolted onto them. A couple of different things that I've noticed in the, the sort of facility here. Blades are always into, yeah, reversible. Aren't reversible, they? yeah. Yep. Yeah, and what we found, you know, over the last 10 to 15 years, you know, a lot of the, the, the plant hires and, and, and owner operators, they request from their dealers to have a, a what, what, what they might call a toothless bucket. Yeah, yeah. But, but we, in fact, uh, we, you know, we can supply or you don't want to supply a toothless bucket or, or something that doesn't have protection yep. for the mother blade. Uh, so we, we when they ask for a toothless bucket on the minis, we tend to put a reversible bolt on edge. Yep. Which is, you, you know, you get the option of of not having a tooth, but you also protect the bucket. Yep. And 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 it, it prolongs the wear. And when you've worn the, the the first edge out, unbolt it, turn it around, you get the second, you get the second crack at it. Two for the price of one, folks. Right over here. Something that Strickland's been known for are, are buckets. Yes. You know? Yes. And of course, and I think. You know, that's a very important part of your business. We see buckets all around us at the moment, folks. Yeah. But the whole industry has moved over time to sort of quick hitches and, and different options and things like that. That actually has created a bit of a problem in some respects as well, because different quick hitches require and different buckets require different hitches and, and the way to attach them, don't they? Yeah. I mean, over my 14 years with Strickland, when I, when I got brought into the company, we, we we didn't have our own offering of, of a quick coupler on a hydraulic option. We start off with a two and a half, three ton. Yep. And, and we go right up to, to 55, 60 ton. Or with our eight ton coupler or six or eight ton coupler, uh, our, our S-lock, we try to make it as universal as possible. Yeah. When you put this on your machine, whether it be a, a, a Hitachi, a Volvo, a Kubota, and so on, the bottom end of the coupler will pick up a 45 mil pin up to a 60 mil pin. Right. Okay. In one, in one, sing, in, in one single, there, yeah. there's no changing to do. Yeah. So, so we listen to our customers. And, and if you think about, um, you know, one of the most popular pieces of equipment in the UK since the 70s was a 3CX. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so everybody wanted to pick up a 3CX, but they also needed to pick up the machine range, the host machine. Yeah. So, so you had a, a forty-five mil pin on a on a on a really long spread for a three CX, but then you know a lot of eight tonners in the country they're on a fifty mil pin, sixty mil pin, and so we needed to, to give our customers the versatility of, of being able to use their existing attachments since the seventies. Yeah, it might have. Some people might have. Absolutely. Yeah, and then we we needed to to give them the, the option of using the the, the host machine uh, attachment. So. There you go, our, our eight tonner in one. Now, that said, on our on our three tonners, on our five tonners as well, they're as versatile too because you can change the hook. It's right. just one bolt. Yeah, one five. bolt. Change the hook. You can change the centers that 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 you need to pick up, and you can change the pin diameter. And it's got to be simple as well. And this is what I'm getting with my tour around here. Yeah, a simplistic solution. Yeah, if you look at the S lock, yeah, 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 uh, simple, safe. Yeah, you know. Uh, it's got the least amount of moving parts of, of, of a hydraulic coupler on the market today, in, in the UK at least. So, there's more, folks. So, over here, we come around. This is new to me. Yes. I'm obviously not new to your customers, but what have we got here? There's yeah, so what you got here is, is a five-ton tilting coupler. Yeah. You know, again, we start at, at our two-and-a-half, three-ton, um, and we go up to our 20-ton. Um 
Uh, and again, with our with our with our standard S lock couplers, the tilting coupler was was a natural progression. You know, the market uh, just demanding more and more versatility out of the equipment that they right. that they already have. Yeah, yeah. So you know, where where you find um, you know customers might have had two excavators, two operators. Um, you, you know, now what they want to be able to do is is one excavator one operator and that 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 does so much more and with the tilting coupler that's that's what you get and we can see in this folks with buckets like this as well you know the use of machine control is growing dramatically uh, for grading and everything like that as well so having those simple additional functions allows you to move the tracks less uh, so therefore less track wear less fuel used as well on the job site particularly important for, for like tight spaces and, and house building as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and you know, you're also thinking about operator comfort as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that they don't have to keep readjusting themselves, keep keep readjusting themselves to get on the on the right pitch to to get to get the right grade. Again, that's where the, where the tilting coupler comes in and, uh, and offers, you know, time time saving as well, you know. They are known for buckets, you know. Yeah. So, and this is a bigger one than we're talking about you. All of the hundreds that are going in yes, yes, from the, the, uh, your site here, this is a bigger one. Um, not as many, but very popular, isn't it? We do a couple of different ranges in our BT40. This being our rock spec, and we do a HD version that is versatile within demolition rock and quarry. Yeah, and, and really hard, I think. Yeah, 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 it is, it is. And and listening to our customers, um, if you notice, and, and we look at some of the teeth on, on, on our other uh, bigger buckets we listened to our customers and and what we went for is a, a esco u45s which is which is you, you know people will go oh hang on that's that's not what strickland always use but but we listened to them and 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 that's what they preferred on on their bigger rock type buckets um and then we we put we'll put heel shrouds on it as well and what we try and do is depending on on your machine your host machine and your pin we try and keep like uh, a 90 mil pin version, a 100 mil pin version, and a 110 mil pin version of of our, of our rock buckets here here on site, just for 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 immediate delivery. Fantastic. So the hard stuff is dealt with, folks, or is it? Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> we will rip on. Yeah. We've got obviously, you know, one of the the critical things about dealing with the hard applications yeah. is sometimes. They're really hard, and so you need the ripper uh, blade uh, on this occasion, don't you? And that's something I didn't really quite realise that was in your portfolio. Yeah. Important part to do the job, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, for me, uh, the 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 ripper hook um, has been part of of the Strickland range uh, since since I've been involved. Um, and I'd, I I suppose you you've you've spoken about this with 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 my colleagues. Um, you know, we we tend to try and over engineer. Yep. So if you look at um, our, our ripper range from our 13 ton up to our 50 ton, we, we don't use an excavator tooth on the end. We use an actual uh, cat dozer tooth. Right. Again, ripper tooths might be an afterthought for somebody in, in their range, but but we put it, you know, quite early in our range. Uh, and we didn't go for, for the old, we've got a, a piece of GET we can weld in there. Yeah. We went for like a, a you know, on our, uh, 13 and 20 tonners is a cat d9 right. so you can Im you can imagine how 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 that d9 ripper gets te th treated on a, on a d9 excavator. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. so you know it's well capable of, of going into the ground on on 13 and 20 tonners and and so on we we go to a a, a, a d10 on our on our 30 tonners as well so you know um and and you've got the shank protector as well and again all replacement parts yeah yeah which we stock here as well we are seeing more and more, you know, buckets without the teeth that we mentioned before. Yeah. But we're also seeing, and I talked to another video of one of your colleagues, we're also seeing this huge uh, uh, elevation of, of Scandinavian-style buckets because yeah. of tilt rotators, because of 3D machine control from the likes of like Geo Systems. And, and we're seeing machines get smaller, but also get bigger in this context as well, aren't we? So... Again, this is really important. We've had to move with the times. Yep. You know, we've had to offer what the customers uh, and, and what we see the market going. And and we have developed our, our own range from S30 to an S70 at the moment. We are working on some S80s. 
So it's even getting bigger and bigger, yes. folks. Yes. We're back to the bigger bit. So we're going to finish this run around, folks, with a bit of a shake up. Yeah. Because this yeah. is a shaker bucket. Yeah, and we mentioned the, the, <laughs> the teeth there, the difference between the these teeth and the rock bucket teeth. Yeah, you yeah. know, again, this is really in, in in heavy juicy application. And you'd be surprised now with the good weather how many of these are sold in springtime. Uh, although spring came quite late, I suppose. <laughs> you, you know, uh, in, in, in 2024, we'll all know it. It's just been so wet. But, um, you know, this is uh, the most... It's the most economical way of sorting material. You know, yep. there, there's no hydraulics involved. Um, you know, you've got you've got your excavator and, and your excavator work that fine. So, folks, it's sun is shining now, even though it has been raining a lot. Um, and this is just a spin around of a small uh, element of the range of Strickland, just to give you an idea of the types of stuff that the team do here. I'm now going to go for another video, folks, and look more at the sort of GET and the facilities they've got here. And we'll certainly see the Strickland brand stamped in many different places. Great to yes, see you. Yes, thank you for your time.